Welcome back to my studio. I'm Karen Zima. Uh, today I'm very excited about this project. It's called The Lion's Portrait. It's done on a 18 by 30 inch canvas. Uh, one of my smaller works of art. I usually like to paint a little bigger, 24 by 30 and 30 by 36. It's a smaller one, but I've been scaling down a little bit because, uh, you know, they're easier to complete in a video. So, um, it's a good size though. So, if you want to see how I put all this together, Lion's Portrait with this intense stare and everything, stay tuned. You don't want to miss a trick. Because if I can do it, you can do it. And I will show you how I created this. Now today, I'm very excited to be working on another wildlife. I haven't done one in a while. I've been doing a lot of portraits. A lot of figurative, a lot of landscapes. I need to build up my wildlife a little more, so I decided to do one. This one is going to be called the Portrait of a Lion. And the way I have it figured, the eye tends to go to this part of the canvas or a photograph first. That's just the way it is. So I'm going to intensify that by making this eye catch all the light, give it more of an intense green, whereas this one's going to be in the shadow. Now, I will show you how to put in the fur, the eyes, all the colors, and all the little nuances to get this painting going. You don't want to miss a trick. Stay tuned, and I'll show you how. Put on your wild print shirt, and let's get to it. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back, and I brought my palette. Now, let me explain the colors. They're all like fur colors that are going to go into this line. Now, I've got my black and my white in the center. Those are kind of standard. And I have a gray here, a pink. We have a Tuscan red, a pumpkin orange, a harvest orange. Uh, that's a tan yellow. And then there's an apricot. We have just a plain old brown. And then we have uh, this one. With the, that was like a spicier, spicier brown. Okay, and then we have a tan. There's a beige. A dark green and a light green for the eye color. Maybe a dab of this blue will go in there. And that is my palette. And I'm sticking to it. Now I hope you put on your wild print and are in the mood. So let's get started on this, shall we? Now what I'm going to do is start with outlining the eye in black. Nice thick. Just, let's say his eye is going to be kind of about there, so let's just darken everything. Nice, nice and dark. I'm using a black. A lion has been a symbol of strength, power, and ferocity, so he deserves a strong portrait. It was my intention. From the start, that the upper right hand side of the painting grabbed the most intention where his right eye is located. Because eyes are the key to this painting, creating a mood and a character in my subject, in my lion. He is just full of character. Very nicely for his portrait. Portrait of a lion. And a little bit of, I, you know, put a, sketched it out with a light water-based paint in purple, which goes very nicely, and I can see a little bit of the purple sticking through, which just makes it nicer. Okay. So, that's that. Now, might as well start putting in his nose. Black, and we're going to have some pink tones in here, some red tones. And we'll let it dry here. And that is going to like that. And like 
Okay. And of course here we have this little section that comes down into the mouth. And you like to see his mouth closed because if it's open, he's going to be Shelling on something or someone. So let's just keep it closed. Alright, just keep that black in there. Other tones will go in. But I'll just build this up in layers. Layers and layers and layers. That's how you paint the acrylics. have amber colored eyes. What I'm going to do first is put down a layer of uh, a dull green and then I'm going to put amber colors, oranges and yellow tones over it and pull out the amber color by the time I'm finished with the eye. So first what you want to do after you put down the layer of green is develop your contrast and form. I use a soft brush, it's actually one of my makeup brushes, to blend my amber tones to the right intensity. After the pupils are put in place, put in some detailing at the corners of each eye. And then the piece de resistance is the highlights in the lion's eye.
you need to keep building the layers as you add texture to the fur. For the fur, I am using various mixes of yellow, orange, black, burnt umber, white, ultramarine blue, and burnt sienna. Then use a fan brush or a bristle brush and drag through the fur a lighter color creating short hair-like patterns and go in the direction of the fur. Then add more shadow or highlights to create the hair effect. Did you know that male lions defend their territory while most of the females hunt? And guess who eats first after the female finds her prey? You got it. It's the male lion who gets to eat first. That doesn't seem fair, but that's a lion. A lion can run 50 miles an hour and can leap as far as 36 feet. And a lion's roar can be heard up to five miles away. Well, I guess I won't be going on any safaris anytime soon. Another fun fact is that a lion's heels don't touch the ground when he walks. That's interesting. I am getting kind of a funny visual here, sort of like a ballerina lion. Don't know what kind of visual you're getting, and that's what I'm getting. Well, actually, he is symbolic of power and courage, making for an intriguing and masterful painting.
not so good. All right, so whiskers would be one of them. All right, so let's see. He's got boop, 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 coming down. And over here. I am a big fan of wildlife paintings because of their difficulty. It inspires me to pull the viewer's eye into the painting. I attempt to make my artwork tell a story and set a mood. You need to bring out the character of your subject. A tight headshot such as mine demands detail, sharpness, and contrast. Wildlife can be fun to paint as you bring out the spirit and personality of your animal. I don't know about you, but it sure brings out my wilder side. My shirt says it all. So pick up your brush, have fun, use your creativity, and put on your wild shirt and paint one of your own. All right, guys, uh, we are on our last leg of this painting. Just putting in a couple little extra little touches here and there. Ah, uh, said so maybe a little red there, some red. That and take a look. Examine all the areas. It always looks different when you step back than up close. You're like working close all the time. Um, when you step back, you get a different perspective on it. So I always, I always step back. Give it the final. Sometimes even turn it upside down. And uh, you see things upside down, or like sometimes photograph and take a look. So I've gotten used to all different ways of taking a look and reevaluating to see if it's done or not. Well, I'm going to give it the thumbs up. I'm going to call it quits on this one. And I hope you guys had fun watching. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe. It's very important to subscribe. It just helps my channel. Because uh, I am making all these videos right now for free. So, you just give it a thumbs up or give, leave a comment, something that's going to help me out. Uh, and let me know what you want me to paint in the future. Because I can paint whatever you want. Like, just give me, give me some ideas, you know. Um, or any helpful comments that you want to leave or questions, anything. I will get back to you and answer you on that. I'm pretty good with you know, responding and stuff. So, if you had fun, give it a thumbs up. And, one more thing. Keep on practicing, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.